Hey guys, it's Mitch here again, and this is going to be my solo guide to Bandos. This will be more relevant to the higher level players with higher level gear, but it still will help the lower level players with the cheaper gear, as killing the boss is basically the same, and I will still tell you what to wear if you can't afford the things I'm wearing. And also I will um, include the higher level setups like that goes further than mine. Also, I'll, I'll show you like the inventory without overloads and things like that, but if if you uh, don't have the levels, just apply what you can and go along with it and see how you go at Bandos. Okay, so these are the minimum requirements on screen now. Now these requirements are seriously the absolute minimum to solo Bandos. Like you would be lucky to get two kills a trip with these if you only had these. So it's I wouldn't recommend soloing Bandos if you actually did have those requirements, but those requirements are just the minimum to actually do it. So on screen now are the recommended requirements. Now these requirements can definitely vary, like with the Chaotix for example, you really don't have to have them, they will just simply give you more kills per trip. And I used a whip for most of my soloing until obviously I got the Rapier, and the whip does work alright if you've got decent levels. Also with the overloads, um, you don't have to have them, but they do definitely help. If you can only have extremes, then I wouldn't suggest using brews because it'll just completely cancel out the extremes effects, so use rock tails. And also the 20 mil is definitely worth it for the, the decent gear that you'll be able to get, and also the supplies, because depending on how many kills you get per trip, you will need quite a large amount of supplies before you actually get a drop to pay off the supplies. And almost 100% of the time, you will eventually get the drop, and that will always pay off the, the amount of supplies you use. Also, the War Tortoise um, is definitely recommended. You can do this with a Terror Bird, but you just, just again, you won't stay for as long. And also, if you have a Unicorn, that that's very helpful. Um, a Titan, I mean, it doesn't do that much, but it's worth taking for after you uh, use your War Tortoise up. Okay guys, so this is the recommended inventory you would take if you have overloads. Now if you don't have overloads, I wouldn't suggest ringing brews because it'll just cancel down your stats. If you do want to ring brews, then bring much more super resource than I, than I take, so bring three brews to one restore, so three doses of brew to one dose of super restore. Also the recover specials are very optional, I just take them because if I get a fail claw spec in, I can just recover special and get that second one in and it just helps you out a bit. Um, the Unicorn can obviously be replaced for a Titan, if you don't have a Titan it doesn't matter because Titans are pretty horrendous anyway, but it still helps if you if you have access to one. Uh, the War Tortoise, if you, can, if you think you can't stay for 15 to 20 um, boss kills, then I wouldn't bother taking a spare pouch because you won't need it. Um, the Claws, definitely bring them, if you can't afford them, borrow them, they're definitely worth it, like they will um, help you out with kills per hour and the amount of kills you can stay in the trip. So if so, as always, whatever amount of overloads you bring, bring prayer renewals. They're very helpful. Also, um, you will probably need to change your, the amount of super restores you bring to me, as I'm using penance. If you don't have penance, then you will need to increase the amount of super restores you have because you get smashed so much when you bando solo. The penance will basically be a supplement for all prayer needed, and. The basically the only reason that I do bring super restores is if I have to brew over twice but I'll go into that a little bit later also the teleports are just there to get there but whether the lore runes, fire runes and baroque teleport is I will be supplementing them for soup for Saradome brews so these are the setups that you want to be using so this is my personal favorite setup you can supplement the BCP for a carol's top if you would prefer to have more magic defense, but I much prefer the range defense as I don't really like sitting there drinking down brews after getting smashed by his range, so you will probably be much less likely getting hit by his range attack than if you wore the Carol's Top because of the ex extremely high range defense that Bandos gives. Also, um, obviously if you have Torva, then wear that, I mean it's quite obvious, and the uh, Shields, Divine, Elysian, Spectral, probably pretty good with this setup as well if you're using the Bandos. Um, also the Chaotic Kite Shield is very good. Um, if you do use a Chaotic Kite Shield, I would suggest wearing the Carol's Top because you get the range defense from the Chaotic Kite Shield. Um, the Ring of Wealth is very good for soloing. If you want to bring a Ring Switch, you can take like a Berserker Ring or an Onyx Ring imbued. 
and and then when it dies you can switch into your ring of wealth to get the ring of wealth effect now for your aura i bring penance penance is very good here um if you don't have penance then as i said you will need to change up your super resource to bruce um, again but i'll talk about that later and if you don't have penance then just use any combat aura that you have so this is your familiar setup if you're using overloads and a penance aura if you're not using a penance aura then i would suggest taking like probably five or six more super restores if you're not using overloads then i would just fill it up with rock tails and don't take bruise altogether yeah uh, if you're using rock tails probably three to four super restores will be enough um so yeah that's not much to say about this uh i prefer to have my pouches in my inventory so i don't have to like take them out during a kill but that's completely up to you Okay, so now that you've prepared, um, basically what you want to do is teleport to Trollheim, drop two brews, teleport back to Varrock, or a bank, any bank will do, and then take out another two brews, or three brews, or just fill your, the, the empty spaces in your inventory with brews. Then when you teleport back, you can pick up those brews, and you'll have a full inventory without any unnecessary items in there. So that's called a drop trick, I'm sure you've, most of you have seen it. So now, just climb down the side of the mountain, climb down the rocks I'm sure most of you can do these agility shortcuts if not well you're taking the long way around if you're under 137 combat uh, pray range here you can either push past or squeeze past they both take either 60 strength 60 strength or 60 agility run north pray melee against these wolves go down this dungeon if you don't have a Sara item then pray mage and I forgot to mention before but you do need a Zami item as well so that can be the Zamorak arrow which I was wearing now we're at kill count, so basically for kill count just hit as many goblins as you can before they get destroyed by the Zami monsters. Um, that, the kill count for this will, should only take you about 3-5 to five minutes, there's nothing much to it but uh, the trick is to get them, get the goblins hit, just, you, could, you could do one health and it will still count towards your kill count unless somebody else takes the kill. which which won't happen if you're on a free world. So it doesn't matter how much damage you deal, as long as the, if the Zami monsters uh, kill it off, you'll still get that kill count. So, and then when all of those goblins are dead, you can run south and kill the hobgoblins. So now that I've got 40 kill count, if you don't have a bandos item, what you want to do is you want to pray melee, come up north to this spot here where you're safe. So you'd be praying melee through here. Then you can pr take off protection from melee here. And this is where you'd look for a world to make sure it's free. Then when you've found one, you pray merely still. And you bang this door. If you don't have a hammer on your tool belt, put a hammer on your tool belt. You, that still counts. And then when you're in here, pray mage. And you should have already potted all the way over there where you were north. Um, and then go in. If you do have a bandos item, then you just wait here and nothing will attack you. Okay, so once you're ready to go in, I like to set my quick prayers to protection from item, protect melee and turmoil. So obviously it would be piety if you were on normal prayers. So protect from, from melee is a must. If you have penance, uh, activate that before the overload, so then your prayer will be healed by the overload damage. Um, if you don't have overloads, it really doesn't matter. So then just um, heal up your overload damage. Obviously, whenever I say overloads, you can just disregard it if you don't have overloads, because the principles for this whole thing is completely the same. Then I wait for my stats to go up, because there's no no use wasting super restore. Should only take 20 seconds or so. Now, if you're using turmoil, remember you want to let it charge, so it takes one hit to charge. So once it's charged, you can claw spec twice, and then take a sip of your recover special. I was having a bit of trouble finding him. I hate playing on fixed screen, like I can't do it, but whatever, that, it makes guys better. So I've hit him once and now I'm gonna spec. Fail spec, and two fail specs. Um, but just a heads up, this trip was probably the worst solo trip I've ever done. It really doesn't affect the guys, so that's why I still used it, because you can still see what to do. So if you're using overloads, the basic principle of using them is two, br two do doses of brew and then you would and then you would uh, just leave it if you take three doses of brew then you need to super restore because your stats will be below your original stats um, because what a lot of people are deceived that overloads just completely negate the brew 
where it, that doesn't really work that way. It actually just it's the brew will still bring your stats down. It's just the overload heals your stats back up to um, the overload's full capacity every ten seconds. I think it is. So as you can see, I'm getting wrecked for some reason. Like usually, I'd be getting thirty kills a trip, and I think on this trip I got twelve. And I haven't changed the setup or anything. It's just the luck of the draw, you know, Jagex with their randomly generated things. Um, I didn't get a drop on this trip, so that doesn't really matter. I mean, you will go quite a few trips dry, but you just want to make sure your prayer stays high. With penance, you really don't have to worry about that because you get hit so much that your prayer will almost always be full. Um, when the when the bandos is dead, so just when I kill him, sometimes you get on these stupid... And I was lagging a lot for some reason. Anyways, enough ranting about uh, the trip I had. Um, so yeah, the basic key things to remember is to keep your health above half. That's when I like to um, take two doses of brew. Because that'll get your health to about 750 if you have 99 HP. Um, and so once he's dead, you want to kill the major first. Now soul split flick um, these mage, these kills because you can basically get your health to full um, after three minions if you do it correctly, um, which is really good because it saves a lot of food. Um, so that's basically all you need to know. Like You just go the magic minion, then the range minion, then the melee minion. So you're finishing on melee, so if he spawns, you're already protecting from melee. You will get quite a few food drops as well. I was That was another reason why this trip was a bit short. I was very unlucky on food drops. So the two foods you'll get is three chili potato drops or two shark drops. Um, when the boss is, so once you've done all that, you want to head to the west wall, I think it is. Yeah, the west wall. Um, pick up any drops or any coins, you may as well pick them up. Um, any rune items, you'll get a lot of them. Um, I like to sort of camp, check them from melee, just in case. I mean, with the prayer renewal, it basically does no prayer. And also, you can pray at the altar every 9 minutes 59 seconds. So definitely do that, that helps a lot. Um, be ready with your quick prayers, and don't forget when you are uh, Dragon Claw, if you have turmoil, you have to let it charge. So you don't want to claw and only be on like a 20% boost when you could be on a 32% boost. Um, try and also a good trip, a good tip, sorry, with uh, your unicorn or any healing familiar is don't have 18 free slots in your inventory and still have a full war tortoise because you could have those 18 slots filled up and then your war tortoise would be empty and then you can summon your unicorn. So you don't want to just be standing around gulping down brews when you can have your unicorn spawned as well. So it's, it's definitely um, advised to try and have your unicorn out as fast as you possibly can. So as you so you'll probably notice a lot of these kills are terrible like don't ask me why i was getting wrecked so much like honestly <laughs> um this setup does work good kind of disregard the footage just look at it and how i'm doing things um that's all i can basically say about bandos uh yeah so i've i've covered almost everything i can think of uh, make sure that when you out of overloads re-overload and just watch your health because you don't want to get destroyed another good tip is to when you see that you're almost out of overload i like to delay the minions so just stand there until i'm out and so i can use the minions to soul split heal my overload back up because when your overload runs out remember it does heal you the damage it originally deals when you drink the dose so you will get to full health and then it will take you down again and you can soul split heal back up so as you can see i got a shark drop there all very helpful um i'm just about done with this guide. I don't think I can say much more. All I can say is good luck on your bando soloing and just keep at it because the average drop rate for uh, an armor piece for me has been probably 1 in 60, 70 kills. Which, when you think about it, I'm getting 30 kills a trip. It's only going to take three, 3 trips and maybe 1 trip could be an hour, hour and a half. For lower levels, it's still, it's still good because... I mean, lower levels don't have as much money, and money means a lot more. So, I mean, t what what is it, like 12, 13 mil in, let's say, five hours for a lower level? That's still very good. So, yeah, keep at it, keep going, and you should get your Bando's item, which you've been so hoping for. Thanks for watching, guys. 
If you think maybe Bando solo is a little tricky, you can try out the Bando's team, which I have a guide on, and you can also try Armadil team guide and Saradoman team guide, which are all linked on screen.